you've got all your types locked down in your TypeScript app, everything is super safe at compile time, and yet sometimes at runtime, you're getting an undefined reference error. So what is going on? Well, it turns out that is a big blind spot that most people don't expect when it comes to TypeScript is that it doesn't have runtime type checking. They expect that there's some kind of TypeScript runtime happening in there, looking at all that data, but there isn't. So on this blue collar coder, we are gonna take a look at how to add runtime type checking to your TypeScript code, make it all that much more secure and safe. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over into the TMP directory. I'm gonna create a new directory called runtime type checking. And within that, I'm gonna go create a new directory called plain. This is just gonna be plain JavaScript. And I'll bring up VS Code. And I'll bring up the terminal. And then I'll go into that plain directory and we'll just set up a real quick TypeScript app. So let's see, npm init. And we'll add TypeScript as well as TS node and the types for node in development mode. Let's see, let's go over here, looking pretty good. So let's set up our TS config file by doing mpx tsc init. That's gonna create that TS config file for us. Looking pretty good, nicely done. Okay, so first thing we need to do is create a file called index.ts. And then I'm gonna go bring in some data. So I've got a, a piece of data over here and just added to the project. It's basically what we would expect from a service, right? You're gonna get results back, it's an array, it's got you know, a user in this case, ID one, name, jack, job, programmer, cool, okay. So let's go and create a function that's gonna go then print out all of the jobs of the people in the results that we get back. So I'm gonna go copy this, go over here into index.ts, I'm gonna then use convert JSON clipboard to TypeScript interfaces, we'll call this a result, and then we'll take this and just drop it in there. Okay, pretty easy. So the first thing we wanna do is just create that basic function. So print jobs. And it's going to take a result, just like that. And then it's gonna go through those results. And with the job, then it's gonna console log that out. Great. All right, and now we get what we expect down here when we try and run this thing. If I put in an empty object, and now if I go run this, right, we get what we expect, a compile time warning, right? So it's not gonna run the code because it failed to compile because this is an empty object, it doesn't match this, it's supposed to have a results array in here. So I go do the same thing. I just put in an empty array in here. Now it will run, but it won't actually print anything. And then finally I can just put in ID one, name John, job developer, sure, great. Okay, cool, and now we've got developer outputting. That's awesome. Okay, so let's bring in FS. And let's try this again. So the first thing we're gonna do is go get the data. That actually looks like a pretty good job from GitHub Copilot. It's gonna read file synchronously of data.json. And now we just need to json.parse that. And then we will send that off to print jobs. And we can even say that this is a result. Just like that, very cool. And let's try it out. Okay, cool. So it's getting programmer just right. Now let's go over here and change this so it's an invalid JSON response. Turns out the server didn't give us what we wanted. Let's try it again. And there you have it. Cannot read property for each of undefined, which is exactly what we were trying to avoid when we chose to go with TypeScript. Isn't there JavaScript code that goes and checks that? Well, let's go and take this over to the TypeScript playground and actually see. So here's the TypeScript playground. I'm gonna paste in our code and we can see that this is the compiled JavaScript on the right hand side. And this is the print jobs function. It takes results. It does exactly what we said it was gonna do. There's no type checking in here and this is what runs. That's how TypeScript works. TypeScript compiles TypeScript into JavaScript and then executes that JavaScript. And JavaScript doesn't have runtime type checking in it. So nor does 
TypeScript. You've got to go and add that yourself. Now, there's actually a really good reason for this. Adding all that type checking code would just bloat the heck out of our applications. If we were going to go check every single point at which we're passing data around every single value, it would get tremendously slow. And no language does that. No compiled languages do this. The point when the system understands that it's an int or a number or whatever, it's assumed that that's the case, that that piece of memory is that type which may or may not be the case. So no modern programming languages do this. So we've got to go and add to that runtime type checking. So the first way that we can do that pretty easily, actually, is to just avoid the issue altogether. So in this case, we could just code defensively. Now, the easiest way to do that would be to do something along the lines of using the optional chaining operator to just say, if there's a results, then look within that for the results array. And then within, if there is that, then do the for each. So let's see how that works in this case. Well, that avoids the issue. But in large functions, you're gonna add a lot of this checking code and you might not catch every case. So are there other things that we can do to check the whole structure before we actually send it on? And yes, if there is absolutely we can do that. So let's go back up to our top level directory and then we'll copy this plain directory into a new directory called with Zod. So Zod is a package that we're gonna to use to do our runtime type checking. So we'll go over here into with Zod. Kneel before Zod. And then we'll yarn add Zod. Kneel before Zod. All right, so let's take a look at how we want to bring in Zod. If we go over here to Zod, we can see that what we want to do is create a schema using this Z operator, and then we can basically check the data against that. So let me first copy and paste this. And what do we need here? Well, we've got an object. That's right. So this is going to be the result schema. And it is an object. And it's got in there results. And that results is an array, where each item in the array is an object. And that object has an ID, which is a number. It's got a name which is a string, and it's got a job, which is a string. Perfect. So now we've got our runtime schema that we're gonna to use to check the incoming data, but we also want a compile time schema. We want this interface, but we don't wanna manage synchronizing those two. So is there a way to do that? Well, yeah, there's this infer. So I can go over here and do result, take that result schema, and now I can get rid of this interface. Now, if I do command K, command I on result, we can see that it's basically exactly the same thing, which is awesome. So that's great. That's perfect. So the first thing I want to do is add a conditional and say, okay, if this is good, then we want to print this out. So how do I check if it's good or not? Well, I do result schema and then I do safe parse and I give it whatever's coming in. Safe parse. Cool. And then on that, I get a success. So if it's good, then we'll print it out. If not, then not. So let's do console.log, say bad data. All right, let's try this out. So is our data good or bad? That's bad actually currently, cool. Let's see. Bad data. So let's try out adding results as an empty array. Excellent. Okay, that worked fine. So let's add an empty object in there. Bad data again, because our incoming schema did not match what we said, ID, name, and job. So let's try ID as a string, but also let's see, name, Jack, job, YouTuber. Okay, let's try that. Again, bad data because ID is not a string. Let's change this to one. And there you go. All right, so this is really valuable, not just from the aspect of having compile time and runtime type checking, but also in the depth uh, that we can use to check this incoming data. You know, you can do the, you can use this for a lot more. It's, it's deeper actually than TypeScript itself. You can go in here and add that you want a, a min value for this. It's gotta be 100 or something like that. And now it'll fail. There's all kinds of 
validity checking and, and defaults. And it's just, it's a, a, an incredibly powerful system. And it's not the only library that can do this. There's actually two more three letter libraries that I want you to know about. One is Yup, and the other is Joy. And they have different sets of features and different complexities. So I'm just gonna go bring in those and we can take a look at the different projects themselves. I'm not gonna go through step by step. Okay, so I've got our with Yup and with Joy. Those are all in the code that's in linked to in the description down below. Let's take a look over at Yup first. Yup is fairly similar to Zon, so you bring in Yup, you bring in type of. The schema is just a bit more verbose in this case. So we'll, the result schema starts with a, an object which is required, and then you specify the shape. So it's object and then shape. It's kind of interesting. Uh, array and then of, and then again you give it the required shape. To get that schema, you get the type of the result schema. Let's do command K, command I on that one. And this one's actually a bit more complex, I would say. You, know, you got a lot of yup stuff in here. It's interesting, it actually locks down the entire object to make sure it ha can't have any additional keys using this never. Uh, so it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty deep. Uh, once you've gotten that schema, then you validate it synchronously against the results and you can see if there's bad input or not. So let's try this out. Yep, looks like we got some good data in there. Okay, so let's try it with some bad data. Let's just remove this entirely and see what happens. There you go, results is a required field. Nice, very literate, a good response message you can send back as part of your API surface, if that's what you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna go and remove job in here. Try that one out. Okay, now that one didn't, invalidate the way we wanted to. And the reason for that is that we need to add in, for example, required in here. So you really do need to understand all of the different methods that you have access to in these different libraries and make sure that you lock it up exactly the way that you want it. Let's try one more time and see if we do get an invalid data. Yeah, there you go. In fact, it's down to the field level. So that's actually really, really nice. Okay, let's also take a look at joy. So this joy example is a bit more complex. We've got our index files now moved into source and it brings in the result schema. That's the runtime schema from the schemas and it brings in the types from this interfaces. And then print jobs remains exactly the same. Essentially, we validate that result schema against the data. We look for that validation result. You see this, there's no errors. And then if there is an error, then we uh, printed that out for us. Otherwise it looks exactly the same. So let's go take a look at those interfaces. So this was actually generated and it created that the correct interface for us. It actually looks really clean and nice. And then the schema is actually pretty tight. So we got our results schema here. It's a joy object. It looks fairly similar to what we got from uh, Zod in the first place. Yeah, I almost, okay, yeah. So it requires, it got a meta in there. This is a little bit of a thing added for the uh, generator. So what's happening here is that it doesn't have that type of that we got with Yup, it doesn't have that infer that we got with Zod. You actually have to go and essentially convert these schemas back into TypeScript. And the way that you do that is you bring in this joy to TypeScript package, and then you write a little bit of code in here, just convert. It basically converts from the source schemas to the interfaces. I see debug is true, cool. So let's actually run that. All right, that's all it took to do that. And now that rebuilt that interface. And let's go try it out. MPX TS node, and then run that index file. There you go, we get programmer. Let's try out uh, some bad data in here and see if it figures it out. So go back over here to data.js.json, pull this out entirely. Yep, there you go, results is required. Pull out job. Fantastic, job is required. So when should you use libraries like this? Well, you should use libraries like this whenever you have external data coming in. And that would include, well, in this case, file system stuff, requests from the web are another area for this, user-generated data is always, of course, something you're gonna to wanna to validate. But also, anytime you are exporting your TypeScript library to a potential JavaScript consumer, 
that JavaScript consumer doesn't care or even know about your types. So they might go and send in some data that you don't expect and you, so you either want to code defensively like we did with the optional chaining or use one of these libraries to very easily make sure that the runtime data coming in is correct. So there you have it. Three different runtime type checking libraries that you can check out. Code's obviously available to you in GitHub from the description down below. Have fun, let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new Blue Collar of Coder video comes out. Try the new glasses. Mm. Oh, mm. I already got some spots on them. Oh well. <laughs> we'll see how they do on the green screen. <laughs>